Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, tremendous storms on the way tonight, top science news, and more as brightness concentrates to the right side. Let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours were very calm indeed. After some small pops at the limb, the activity quieted considerably, and the largest umbral field group turned over the far side to the right. There are a few little spots remaining behind him, but that is the decaying group that never produced anything despite its magnetic complexity. In terms of plasma filaments, it has mostly been a show dancing around the limbs, but center disc at the end of this sequence is a dark arch we'll be watching today in case it decides to break out of its coronal cage. Let's peek at the solar wind. Relatively calm telemetry except for the second panel from the top, blue. Phi angle. The solar wind was calm kinetically, but had a magnetic reversal within it, which occurs and disrupts Earth's magnetic field every two weeks or so, but not usually to the point of geomagnetic storminess. Those with our app hopefully got that minor storm alert come through last night. It was the sector boundary between northern and southern coronal hole IMF and solar wind. That means the stream from this equatorial opening is now due today, along with more storm conditions possible. We're going to Vietnam, where torrential rainfall in the northern highlands has trickled down, not so slowly, and inundated populated provincial areas, taking out hundreds of homes, thousands of livestock, killed at least 15, and hope is dwindling for the 11 still missing who were known to be in the danger zone of the flood. Let's go to our top science stories and find a detailed coronal hole evolution manuscript describing a growth phase, peak phase, and decay phase. Now, in addition to noting the sectors and the solar wind characteristics of each, I might remind folks of an almost exactly timed pattern to the polar vortices, semi-permanent lows, and Rossby wave-related features in Earth's atmosphere. Up next, we're in Antarctica where the coldest place on Earth just got colder. Well, not really, it's just that humans figured out they had the wrong data, thinking it was warmer than it really is. Geez, that is sounding so darn familiar. Oh well, it'll come to me later. Let's do something cool. So imagine a giant bubble in space. Now imagine it somehow gets pinched and collapsed near the middle, appearing to form two bubbles, one on top of the other. 100 points in your brain if it went to Fermi bubbles. The energized regions shine brightly in gamma rays and had always been thought to be separate creations of the central active galactic nucleus, but this new paper takes the super bubble concept stance, detailing how a massive formation could be molded by the galaxy it calls home. Last but not least, folks, this was contrived before the ESA's long-range lensing test roundhouse kick modified gravity and MOND cosmology, and it is expected to come back anti-MOND as well. They plan to show how satellite stars and galaxies can detail the mass function there. I caution, though, that such determinations can tell the mass nearby, but not whether it is normal matter or some mysterious new particle. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got big storms forecasted on the wind maps in the Midwest states and in Japan. Also have shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 3.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.